So there I am on the floor and I'm playing the song and I'm still rocking. And then I get up and that's when you see the video start. <laughs> It looks really, had, it, had they got the first part where I was on my back on the floor still playing, we wouldn't even be talking right now. They'd just be like, oh, this old guy still thinks he's a rocker, you know? But no, they got the next part, which is what you see is where <clears throat> I get up, step forward onto the stage, and I think I went, I guess I tried to kick the tip bucket is what got me on the floor. I went back for the tip bucket because I guess in my mind I wasn't going to be defeated. So what you see is me go for one more kick at the tip bucket and then it's just backwards from there and into the basically into the sub, into the table next to me and down. And yeah, so the long version is a doozy and I'm sure at some point it's going to find its way around. So the long version, does it start earlier or does it go longer? It starts earlier and ends right there. Ends where the where the short version ends. So it's the same person. No, 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 no. It's different. Different angle. angle. Oh yeah, there's, there's a, multiple angles. There, out there. Oh, there's a hundred angles out there. I'm surprised that you know this guy, this McCoy guy. I haven't even talked to the guy that posted it. I I followed him and uh, sent him like a thumbs up. You know, like hey, congrats on you. You don't hate that guy? No, nah, man. I mean, like it's it's. I I, I think we all kind of hate the the stigma of social media. You know, because like I said, if we had cameras on our phones 10 years ago, I'd have been outed way back in the day. I've done this before. This isn't new. What song were you guys playing? Milk Cow Blues. Oh, that's the song. It's, it's, somebody asked me that, and, and, and that's when it finally hit me. Uh, somebody, uh, who was, somebody messaged me and said, dude, what, what song were you playing that led you to that sort of you know, violence? And I was like, we're playing... Fucking Milk Cow Blues, man, by Bob Wills. And I was like, and all of a sudden, it just got into me, you know? Kicked the mic stand, kicked the guitar case, kicked the tip jar, money went everywhere, hundreds of dollars. Um, but it's ha it happens all the time. People come to the show because not for me getting shit-faced and falling on my face. That's not what people are coming out for. They They, they will now. But I'm not mad at them for it. Like, I'm not, I'm not one of those who'd be like, oh, they just stood around and filmed it. You know, fuck it. They should have, you know? I mean, what else are they going to do? It's my fault. Everything's good. It just, uh, you know, not ideal. Not what I would want to be known for. Nobody ever posts the good stuff. You know, nobody ever comes out and just says, hey, man, you know, Phil's got a new album coming out. Hey, Phil's got a Kickstarter going, you know? It reminds me of an age-old joke, one of my favorite jokes of all time. Did you notice that fence as you come up? He said, yeah, I did. Nice. I followed it up, actually. Nice, straight fence. He said, I made that fence myself. He said, do they call me Jones the fence maker? No. Do you like this bar? That's solid mahogany, that. He said, I made that myself. So that's a very nice bar, actually. Yeah, you made that yourself? Fantastic. He said, and do they call me Jones, the bar maker? No. What do you think of that? What do you think of that Guinness? Do you think I've pulled it well? He said, that's a very well pulled pint. Yes, I love that. He said, and do they call me Jones, the Guinness puller? No. He says, but you fuck one goat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You fuck one goat. <laughs> Go fucker for the rest of your life. This is, That's exactly what it is, man. You're like, I got, I got dozens of songs recorded and all, you know, thousands of dollars invested in this. But yeah. oh, I'm the guy that fell on stage. Great. That's great. Uh, it's funny. It's hilarious. Like I said, I get it. I, I'm not upset that anybody thinks it's funny. But I have such a good time with the crowd and interacting with the crowd. And at some point, like I say, you become the monkey in the cage, not the ringleader. And, uh, that's kind of where it all went. So what was happening leading up to it? Like that before the video started? Well, because the guitar case is full of money. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You were doing so, something right. Uh, it was a great show. Like uh, we, we put on a great show. Um, you do a four hour show and you're drinking and you're having a good time and somebody brings you a Rumpel Mints and somebody brings you a Jim Beam and somebody brings you a tequila and before you know it, you know, you're playing Milk Cow Blues upside down. So... <laughs> 
I knew I'd drink and have a good show and have a good time and probably show my ass a little bit. And that's kind of what I do every week is a little bit in a manageable way. Um, even sober, you know, it's still the same show. Um, but every once in a while, we all need to cut loose, man. And I cut loose a little bit. And will it happen again? I'm not going to get on somebody's podcast and say it's never going to happen again. Uh, my wife will tell you it's not going to happen again. I think when you embarrass your wife, when you embarrass your family, when you embarrass your friends, you embarrass uh, the, the musicians that are on stage, you embarrass the bartenders and the owners of the club. Um, that shit's not funny. You know, it's, it's still funny to the people that see it on TikTok and it's still funny to everybody who's not immediately affected by it. Um, but it affects a lot of people. It affected a lot of people. It affected my household. It affected a lot of things. And there's a lot that leads up to a situation like that that have also been an effect that led up to, you know, that situation. I said Friday, it's time for me to tie one on. And Saturday I did it, you know? I mean, <laughs> it, it, there's a lot of things uh, leading up to Saturday where I said, uh, I think I'm going to have a little drinky drink. And does it feel like that backfired? I knew what was coming. I didn't know it was going to go this way. I didn't know it was going to get to that extreme. But for the most part, everybody's been real supportive. Musicians have been super supportive. People in the music scene have been very supportive. The musicians that are coming through and saying, hey, me too, hey, I did that, hey, it happens to all of us. Man, everybody's going to do it once, you know? You know, like I said, Lake Charles, Louisiana is posting it on their website, you know, at a radio, FM radio station. Jarrett and from Bowling for Soup posted it. Really? And he said, I remember when I fell on stage. So what you're getting is support. Like, yeah, yeah. hey, and we're all going to laugh at this because it's hilarious. Yeah. But here's my story when it happened to me. That's pretty cool. I didn't know Bowling for Soup. Yeah, go check it. out Jarrett on his Instagram. That's funny, man. It's yeah, cool, I'm right? To check it out. And I've gotten messages from from people who I kind of idolize. People in the Texas music scene who've messaged me and reached out and just said, "Hey, man, just want to let you know we love you, we support you." Uh, that means a lot. It, had I fallen any other way, it might be a whole different story. But it was epic, and it's TikTok worthy. I I agree. Yes. Because um, you have to take yourself out of the equation in a way and say, if that was somebody else, I'd chuckle. But then you move yeah, on. Yeah. And yeah. most normal people chuckle and move on. Right. The people that might know you or know of you are thinking, oh, that's funny. I got it. Yeah, yeah. And then there's and, a, a group of people that are going to say silly things, rude things. Yeah. I think as men, it's hard to face a lot of things and be vulnerable and be open about it. Depression is a big thing that that men need to learn how to deal with. Probably something that I need to learn how to deal with. Something I've been dealing with in the very recent uh, weeks leading up to this. Um, why? Man, I don't know. I've got a good job. I've got a great family. I've got an awesome wife. I've got really good friends. Um, what causes it? That's what men don't talk about. What's causing this? What's making me have these thoughts? What's making this, what's making my head work this way, you know? And uh, I would say that's what I want people to get out of this. There's a lot more going on when you see something going on, you know? And uh, they say if you want to find something bad, you look for it, you'll find it, you know? A lot of people aren't looking, and I don't blame them, but a few people messaged me and said, hey, man, what's what the fuck's really going on? This isn't you. And I'm going, yeah, I, I know. I'm trying to figure it out to you. That sucks. That's the shitty part of the whole deal. So it's tied to the stress and depression of real life. It's not just a moment in time where you... I'm just having a great time and drinking and just thought I'd tie one on with my buddies. Because if it was just a good night with no stress in life, it'd be easier for this to roll off your back. Probably so. Yeah, I'd probably come in and say, what, what do you want me to say, man? I got fucked up. But hey, man, if it gets me another gig or something, people want to see me play. People want to listen to my music on Spotify. Uh, people with a drinking problem want to hear some of my music and kind of hear some of the stuff I've written about, which is all heartfelt stuff. And uh, I think some of my songs are stuff people need to hear. Then whatever, man. If it gets my name out there, then that's cool. I just want, my, I just want people to listen to my music. I want them to steal it and share it and, and burn it on CDs and 
floppy drives and whatever they want. And we're going to go back Saturday. We're going to put on a show. It's going to be a great show. Uh, I probably won't have a drop. And um, if people are disappointed about that, then fuck them, you know? And that's kind of my attitude. No encore performance. No, no, I've got none of that. And, and it's never planned, you know? Right. It, it just happens. I just want to go back and play my music, and, and I want right. people to come out and go, man, this guy's a pretty cool motherfucker. Train keeps rolling. Yeah. Yes. That's, that would be capitalizing for me, is, hey, everybody's looking. Let's mm-hmm. do it right. Yep. Let's give them. Let's give them a show. Let's hear the end of the Milk Crate Blues. Right. <laughs> hey guys, Phil Wallace here. Hey, I just want to invite you guys all out this Saturday to Filthy McNasty's. I'm going to be back two to four. Wayne Young is going to be back on the drums. I think he's still sitting there playing right now, waiting on me to get there. But uh, big thanks to everybody at Filthy's last week, and we'll see you out there this week too, man. It's going to be a good time. Two to four. Joshua Ingram's going to be playing after me. My boy T-Bone Stern is going to be playing the next day, 3 to 6. So y'all get out there, Filthy McNasty's, Fort Worth Stockyards.